On a cold winter's night, four legends come together to celebrate the winter season. Instead of competing against one another, this time the rules have shifted, resulting in the most epic collab to this day. Benny convinced some of the biggest artists in our creative community to join him in this festive quest for greatness. These four guys will anonymously pick someone from whom they will collect a series of stock photos. The one who receives them has to make the artwork in Adobe Photoshop using only those images and nothing more. At the end of this video, we'll reveal who picked who because this is a mystery for both the artists and you as the audience. Let's take a look at who's joining this challenge. First off, from the UK, Alan, also known as Phase Runner. Hello, Phase Runner here. I've been working as a digital artist for over 12 years and I've been dabbling with photo manipulation for about the last four. I'd say my work is heavily inspired by fantasy and sci-fi themed movies, books and video games as seen on my YouTube channel. And I've had the honour of working on some cool projects for Marvel, Prime Video and more recently creating official artwork for Avatar The Way of Water. To check out some of my work, you can find me on YouTube and Instagram at Phase Runner. Our second participant is Indro from India, who goes by the name NCreate. Hey guys, how are you all doing? Indro here, or some of you might know me as NCreate. First of all, a huge thanks to Benny for having me on his channel. I really appreciate the work he's doing and how he's creating opportunities for artists. As for me, I'm from India, I'm 32 years old, and I'm a web developer. But Photoshop has always been my hobby and passion, and I'm doing it for more than 10 years. I hope you like our artworks, enjoy the show, and have a whole lot of fun. Next up, we have Jeff, also known as Seventh Voyage. What's going on, guys? I'm Jeff, also known as Seventh Voyage. Apologies for my voice. Uh, I'm still getting over the flu, so I sound like a giant nose. I've been working in Photoshop for over 12 years. Uh, my style definitely reflects poster art, and my concepts tend to lean lately uh, more towards the horror genre. I think this is the third or fourth time Benny's had me on his channel, and I always appreciate it, and I really think you guys are going to love this episode. And finally, the owner of this channel, Benny. Well guys, if you didn't know yet, I'm Benny. I've been using Photoshop for about four years, close to four years, I believe. Now I'm just gonna say, I am super excited for this challenge. I am super honored to have these guys on here with me. Uh, let's just get into it and see who we're gonna pick. All right, who's it gonna be? See who we got here. Let's check it out. Okay. I was uh, not gonna lie, I was secretly hoping for that. Ooh, okay, nice. Okay, so it's... The artists have all picked, so now it's time for them to go on the hunt for some proper stock imagery. For the big part, they'll be using Envato Elements, the sponsor of today's video. On Envato Elements, you can download unlimited amounts of stock photos, stock video, sound effects, you name it. I'm sure for this challenge, many of us are gonna go over to the 3D section since there's a ton of stuff and you can choose your own angle so it fits perfectly. As you know, Benny is a long time. Oh, bloody hell. Benny is a longtime fan and he couldn't recommend it to you more. I wouldn't be lying if I said Benny uses it for pretty much every single project project he's working on. It's great to be able to grab certain overlays and just put them onto your footage or your Photoshop edits and just spicing it up that way. Now we are giving away three year long subscriptions so if you want to win make sure to comment on my latest Instagram post, I mean Benny's latest Instagram post, to have a chance of winning. Even if you don't however for only $16 a month you can have unlimited access to all to all of their uh, you know, their thing. Head to the description down below and click the link to give this channel some extra support and your own craft some extra support. I'll, I'll see you, uh, I'll see you soon. Well, it seems all assets are in. 15 photos each. So let's get unpacking. I'm gonna open up my stock images and see what I've got to work with. Uh, definitely winter vibes. I kinda wish there were some more holiday vibes in here. Okay, so this looks really promising. They have got a lot of possibilities. We've got, uh, we've got some snowy images. 
bunch of landscapes as well. I can already see we've got some northern lights in there. Always a good thing. Great for creating atmosphere and manipulating for different magical effects. Yeah, I'm just gonna apologize now for the most likely horrendous artwork that I'm about to make using these. This classic microbus really catches my attention. Not a ton of houses, just a few. I was hoping for a bit more, but I guess... There's some nice landscapes in here, plenty of elements to isolate and utilize, so they're right up my street. I'm always up for the challenge. Let's do this. Let's see how it goes. Cool, I'm excited to get started. We can just go crazy and uh, see what happens. Finally, it seems important to go through some rules for making their artwork. First off, all the artworks will all have a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, with a resolution free of choice. They cannot add any sort of other digital asset to their given collection, but they are allowed to use the brushes they had already installed and use often. We don't want to disrupt their workflow, do we? They are required to use all images at least once, no matter how big or small, noticeable or hidden. Finally, there is no time limit. They can spend as much time on their artwork as they want. I would hate to be wasting time here. Let's fire up Photoshop and begin this journey. Good luck to each and every one of you. Okay, so after giving it some thought, for my piece, the aim is to create a magical Christmas town taking inspiration from children's animated movies such as The Grinch and Smallfoot to hopefully create a scene full of vibrancy and wonder. And of course, I'll be on the lookout for any interesting ways to manipulate the images given to me. There may or may not be an attempt to create a yeti using only trees. I've started with this panoramic mountain image, which I've manipulated slightly to give it more styling and character. I'll then throw in this northern lights image nice and early to help create some mood, and straight away that transforms the atmosphere. Now that I've got a base for the middle ground and background, I can start setting up the foreground. For that, I'm going to cut out various parts of snow and rock, and use the warp tool to get those into a suitable position, and then adjust the colours and lighting to fit with the scene. The idea is for this foreground to be higher up, looking outward over the landscape, so it'll need to be a lot darker than the rest of the image to separate it and create some distance. At this point, I've got a vague idea of where I'm going, but I'm hoping the idea develops as I roll with it, but uh, I'm pretty much just winging it and hoping for the best. These trees will be great for framing the image and guiding the user's gaze inwards. Again, I'll make them pretty dark so that their shape stands out nice and clearly against the backdrop. Some of these cutout jobs I've done are pretty janky around the edges, so I'll need to revisit those and just clean them up a little bit. Ideally, we want the foreground to appear as though it's rolling down into the valley, so I'll place some trees slightly further away and lower to help create that effect. That's a start, but it'll need more for sure. So, I think rather than just plonking a town down in the middle of the valley, it'll be better to create some more mountain and rock formations and place the town at the foot of one of them. So I'll just cut out some mountain peaks and manipulate them so they don't look like copies. And it's important to create some separation between these layers of rock so they look defined and read well. I can do this by simply brushing in some layers of light and shadow. To be fair, I'm probably going to be tweaking these positions a lot throughout the process. I just need a rough idea of where they'll be until things develop a little bit more. Okay, I feel like I've only used two images so far, so definitely need to get a move on and start picking up the pace soon. But the foundation for the scene is pretty much there now. I'll just add a few more trees near our foreground to really emphasize that idea of this path leading off and down into the valley. I'll then be free to move on to some more interesting but definitely trickier elements. All right, let's get it started. First up is this cool VW bus. With it nicely cut out, I placed it at one third position from the right. The rule of third kind of always works. I also warped it to make it look a bit cartoony and wonky and also tapered the backside so that it felt like the bus was zooming out from the canvas. Next it's time for our good old Santa. I placed him in one of the front seats and with some masking he should be good to drive. Then I brought in the rest of his crew and it's no surprise they were the snowmen. I put this little one just next to Santa, maybe he's the navigator. I had separate plans for the one with the hat, I'll come to that later. Okay, now this must be my favorite one. Just look at the million dollar smile on his face. So I thought, why not I just put him right outside this window and he can enjoy the wind and have the best time of his life. Coming to the gift stocks, I stacked them on top of the bus. 
I also sneaked in some candy cans here and there in between them and since the car is moving, I cut out some gift boxes and made them fall off from the top. Quick patching with clone stamp tool and some manual painting to create intact gift boxes and that should do it. Ok, now comes the dude with the hat and I just made him go flying. Changed his expression a bit and gave him arms by copying them from his friend. Well here I tried to put the light chains to some good use and I bend them with the puppet warp tool wherever necessary. And if you haven't guessed it already, I also used the lights to tie him to the bus. After that, all I needed to do was create the background landscape with the rest of the stocks. I repurposed the house image to create a village. The idea goes like this. On the night of Christmas Eve, Santa delivered all the gifts just in the nick of time. The sun is also coming out, so he's hurrying back to North Pole. There were some nice decorative items on the image of the house, which I could reuse in other places. A Christmas themed image cannot be complete without a Christmas star, so I added that as well. This too comes from the same image. I changed the number plate into something interesting and with that the basic stock placement was done and I could move on to the color creating. The very first thing I did was paint a very quick sketch of my idea. As I said earlier, I didn't have a ton of houses and buildings, but I really wanted to make one of these very cozy Christmas villages either way, so I made that my ultimate goal. Essentially, it would become this sort of street with a nice background in the middle and some northern lights in the sky. You may be asking how the hell are you gonna do this since you barely have any proper house photos? Well, let me show you. I took some images that have wooden parts in them and started cutting those parts out. Using these snippets, I tried making full wooden textures. They looked a bit repetitive at first, but this would improve a big deal later on as I add more detail. I ended up with two large wooden textures and some pole elements. Believe it or not, these are gonna be the bases of the houses I'm about to build. I began my actual artwork with a snowy ground image. I put this one in place and made sure it covers the entire foreground. This is what I was gonna build my houses on, starting on the right. The first thing I did was add some wooden textures along with a few poles and tried blending that into the snow. I then used the other texture I made to add shelves onto that, on which I could put some nice stuff later. You gotta understand, these houses are gonna be 100% custom, meaning I'll have to paint all the lighting and coloring completely manually. And this isn't really something I've done before, as usually I mostly rely on stock photos. But I guess I just wanted to try and see if I could reach a higher level of editing, so to speak. Usually I just don't think I allow myself enough time to work on these things, because at some point the video has to be finished to upload, you know? Not this time though. So this time I'm giving it my all and I'm very curious to see where that leads. This is basically repeating a similar process, adding in an element, adding lighting so it fits and so on. I used both items from the given photos and self-painted stuff like the ropes holding up the shelves and some bolts, etc. I'm just happy they've given me this image because there's so much I can take from here. Tons of Christmassy items for on the shelves. Throughout this video you'll notice me adding these small elements because often I pick a tiny detail from an image and then implement it into this artwork. building may not be completely finished yet, but for now I did consider it good enough so I could move on to the rest of the street, because there is a lot to do here. So my concept for this was essentially to make a holiday card. 
have this guy and his dog walking back to their cabin in the snow and really give it a winter wonderland vibe. I started by adding in the car, masking it behind the front tree and changing the color. I then needed to add transparency to the windshield, so I duplicated the car, masked out just the windshield and used blend if on it. Then on the car below, I masked out the windshield so the blend if version would show. I added some shadows to the side, then inserted the cabin into the scene. I flipped it, then masked out the windows because I'm going to replace the interiors with parts of another cabin photo. Then I needed to make the cabin look like it was in snow. So I cut out part of the background image and placed it at the foot of the cabin and added some shadows. Next, I got the man and his dog inserted into the composition and then made some adjustments to the composition using levels. I wanted the roof of the cabin to be covered in snow, so I painted it with a whitish color and used Blend If to allow the roofing to still show through. I then used some brightness and contrast on a mask to shape it up a bit. Next, I cut out parts of this other cabin photo because I knew I could use them to fake an interior of the cabin. So I dropped them in and masked them to match the window shape. I then added in the Christmas tree. The man needed some footprints behind him, so I grabbed some from another photo and warped them to line up behind him. I used blend if and masking to make them seamless. I also added back in the snow under the dog so it looked like he was in snow. Okay, I want to have some kind of magical Christmas tree set above the peak of this mountain, soaring up into the sky. I'll use different blending modes and layer styles to create the glowing, translucent effect. And then this glitter image to create some magical sparkles raining down below. Doesn't really make any sense, but hopefully it'll make for some nice eye candy later on. Okay, and now one of the parts I was probably dreading the most because I had no idea how I was going to do it. Creating the Christmas town. Fortunately, we've got some good assets that should work fine for this idea, and we've also got some other elements to lean on, such as the mountain and giant magical tree, meaning the town doesn't have to be too spectacular, but all of these elements combined should provide an interesting enough subject and focus. With some simple colour and lighting tweaks, this stock image of a fishing village will form the majority of the town. I can simply duplicate, reuse and mask away certain parts so it fills the space at the foot of this mountain and I'll add in a few different huts and blend those in so there's a little more variation, as well as warping the shape so they've got that Whoville vibe. And then I can grab the tower sections from this fantasy castle to create, uh, well, more towers, I guess. I'll use a color overlay adjustment layer to brush in some snow and then get them into position. And just quickly creating some more glow given off by the tree and one more hut for even more variation. Something like that. Now of course it wouldn't be a Christmas town without some Christmas lights and I do have some of those to play with so I'll duplicate those, make some hue adjustments and then place them about the town. We've got some birds which I'll position off to the left emerging from the trees just doing bird things. I've yet to really get stuck into the lighting, I usually save that for later, but the large tree looks a bit meh, so I'll utilize these northern lights some more to create some swirls of light warping around the tree. Something like that. And then I'll apply a twirl filter to the glitter image, and the plan is to dot these around the tree to create some nice otherworldly ethereal effects beaming up into the sky. 
nice and subtle, but it just adds a little something extra. Ah, the frozen droplet image. With this, I'll create some small planets. Slightly weird, but I like the idea of it feeling a bit surreal and otherworldly, almost like a portal opening up out into the universe. To kick things off with the color grading, I needed to add a classic Christmas vibe on the bus. I used the pen tool to mark out the shape and used the trusty hue saturation adjustment layers to magically transform the green bus into red and white. Now, this is looking pretty Christmassy. But the gifts on the top were looking a bit boring, so I added a dash of colors to them. I simply took a layer in color blending mode and brushed different colors. With some haze in the distant areas, I made the atmospheric perspective come into play. And that should add some depth to the scene. Next, I snapped some curves adjustment layers on the various sections to add a dark blue color cast onto them. Once everything was nice and dark, I brushed with black on the layer masks of the curves to bring back some light, but only in the required areas. After that, I created multiple passes of color casts. For that, I used multiple layers in soft light and overlay blending mode and dab the colors. This should hopefully slowly make the whole image come together. For the areas that have a stronger light source, I went with a combination of linear dodge blending mode with soft light and overlay. I mixed in painting some highlights to make everything, well, realistic. A shadow on the ground was much needed and that should make the bus look floating. Some light streaks below the wheel to add some extra magic. They would also act as guiding lines and help guide the viewer's eyes towards the vanishing point. Let's quickly make the lights glow. I used a layer in linear dodge blending mode for that. Now this is looking fun. Before moving further, I experimented with the overall color grading. I started with a color lookup table in color blending mode. Fall colors looked pretty punchy, but that needed to be masked from the darker colored front area of the bus. I also dropped in a curve in a dark blue shade to accentuate the shadowy areas. Some extra curves with lifted blacks should give it a washed out retro look and another curve with tweaks in the blue and green channels should compensate the contrast and add some interesting hue shifts. The overall mood was now looking pretty good to me and I could move on with completing the finer details. With the first building out of the way and a good idea of how this will work, I moved on to the main building on the left. You already guessed it, this is really just the same exact kind of thing except a different configuration. This one did require some more manual painting as I really wanted to go custom. I was gonna add windows, roofs, snow, you name it. For these kind of green Christmas decorations, I thought why not use the grass from this deer photo. I cut that out and added a ton of effects to give it that different look. And I'm actually so surprised that worked. You can barely even tell it's grass in the final artwork. I added some of these red berries as well as a cherry on top. I really love using elements on different and unexpected ways because it allows you to make much crazier stuff and it always ends up looking very unique. In my head, I made a small list of things I'd have to do for every house I'll build next. First off, of course, put the walls up, then add windows with that orange kind of tone inside. Add snow on the horizontal areas and possibly some decorations. Add this white kind of frost all over the place to give it a cold look and surround it with Christmas trees. The roof is also really nothing new. Again, I determined the shapes after which I blended it in there using shadows. All using the wooden textures and snow image I've been using this whole time. I topped it off with a few final decorations and well, time to move on to the next one. For the ones further down the street, I decided to actually use one of the few houses I did have. But I soon realized they just looked a bit too standard for my taste and this is when I decided to add multiple levels of these so I could still get away with that cozy vibe I'm looking for. 
again with a ton of painting shapes and textures I got myself a building structure that I liked a lot so I began making it look more realistic. Because all of these actions are so similar it's difficult to keep explaining what I'm doing but I suppose most of it speaks for itself at this point. And all of this is still just making the bases. There'll be a point where I have to actually make it all look nice and give an atmosphere to it and nice vibes. What have I gotten myself into? We're already five hours in at this point. I wasn't really happy with the amount of detail these buildings have so I started adding even more. To some of the green decorations I thought it'd be fun to add some Christmas lights and that I added here and there. And to make sure I use these rocks as well I may as well just put them in the foreground here kind of like that. Now I again started some new houses and tried putting variety in the way they looked by changing the proportions and styles of the windows and roofs. I even recycled some of the existing houses for those that weren't going to be all that visible anyway. The scene was feeling a bit crowded, so I stretched my background image up to let it breathe a bit. I wanted the license plate to say 7 Voyage, so I painted out the old one, added some text, warped it, and then added some bevel effects to enhance the realism. I was going to add the lantern to the house, but it looked kind of strange over there. So I drew some handles and added it to the guy's hands and painted out part of his glove. I masked out some of the glass within the lantern and made the flame slightly larger. I wanted some more texture on the snow in front of the cabin. So I masked out some snow from another image, enhanced the texture in camera raw, and then blended it in. I needed to use this lake image, so I used the marks on the ice and placed them over the windows to be a bit like textured glass. I then added some rocks into the foreground from the image of the mountains I had. I had to do something with this nebula, so I used color range to grab the brightest parts, then put it in screen mode and used puppet warp to make it look like smoke coming from the chimney. I'll brighten it up in the final piece. I had these light stars, so I put them in screen mode and made them look like Christmas lights around the roof of the cabin. I also used a color profile to make it seem like it was getting closer to nighttime. I added some levels to the background image and masked it a bit to add some more separation to the background. The roof of the car needed some snow, so I painted some on. So next up I'm going to pull this nice snow texture from the top of the hut and create a large snow blanket covering the scene. I can then hide it with a mask and then reveal areas of snow with a brush in certain places like on these rocks and mountain peaks. I want it to eventually kind of look like a scene from an animated movie so these caricature snow peaks should help with that. I tend to do most of the lighting and colours at the end, but I'll add in a bit now so it doesn't look quite so flat and dull, and then use the colour range tool to pull the snow from this image and clip it to the centre mountain. And here's where things could go very wrong. I'd recently seen the film Smallfoot with my nephews, and I had the terrible idea of cutting out these mountainside trees and turning them into... a yeti. But you've got to admit, those trees do kind of look like fur, so I figured maybe it's doable. There's only one way to find out. 
I'll do a bit of warping and then cut out the general shape and duplicate this section to create the different limbs. Definitely starting to panic, but it's maybe starting to take shape. Some highlights and shadows to emphasize the shape in the right places, and we might just about have a passable, cartoony looking Yeti. And why not throw a baby Yeti in there as well? Of course, this is all good for adding narrative to the image. I don't want them to appear scary, but more like lonely outsiders looking in. Using the falling snow to create some glistening highlights on the ground. And we'll use my final image of Santa in his sleigh to create a present for our little Yeti to carry. Once that's done, it's just a case of revisiting the different sections, addressing the lighting and colours, and giving the scene those final touches. Okay, let's keep adding details and effects to what we have created so far. I made the indicator lights glow and added some extra magic on the wheels. Time to spice up the sky with some interesting cloud patterns. I used some samples from one of the stocks and used the smudge tool to create some nice swirly painterly clouds. I also painted with a generic cloud brush here and there. The sign mode needed some touch of snow. I quickly added some sampling from a snowy stock using the clone stamp tool. Next I needed to work a bit on the interior lighting of the bus. I made the lights come out from somewhere in the middle. That way I could do away with the light direction on the snowman and I would only need to add the lighting on Santa. First I darkened him up using our curves, then I brushed away on the layer mask to reveal the lit areas. It suddenly occurred to me that if I added some light chains, that would justify the source of light. Alright, at this point I was left with only one stock, and that was the snow overlay. So without any delay, I added it, changed its blending mode to color dodge, and added a motion blur. Oh, I almost forgot to make the wheel spin. I quickly added a spin blur and that should make it look realistic. Also to add a sense of motion, I added a path blur and the direction of the blur converged to the vanishing point. I added a black mask to the blur layer and only showed it where it's the strongest. As the camera is moving with the bus, the areas farther away from the vanishing point should have the most blur. Towards the end, I added some snow on the bus and worked on the final touches. Now it was time for finalizing the look and vibe. This started with a simple background and a subtle layer of blue haze to give it some depth. For the background, I used various different images like this village, some mountains and a sky. Also tried filling up the gaps with trees and other details, plus some nice blue tones all over the place. This is also when I started adding the stock photos I hadn't used yet, like the castle on the hill in the background. The 
The same goes for this deer. I just wanted to have it in there, even though I already technically used the grass from this photo. I later also added Santa and the girl. At the end, I added a camera raw filter. I was looking for this nice gold bluish vibe with an element of fantasy and magic. It ended up being very vibrant and very colorful and super sharp, which is just what I wanted. Looking back at the stock photos, I'm actually quite amazed by how unexpected this one turned out for me. I wasn't sure I'd be able to do something like this, but it actually worked out fantastically. Now it's time to start adding some lights to some objects outside of the cabin. I went in and painted some on the trees, the man and his dog, the car, and the snow on the ground. I then started painting highlights and also going in and adding in some other details like shadows under the man and making sure his foot is surrounded by snow. I ran into some issues with my screen capture so I don't have the last bits of details that I did and the color grading, um, but you can see that in the final image. It seems as though everyone has finished their piece of magic, which means it's finally time to reveal their secrets. So here's what I've ended up with. I set out to create a magical Christmas town, like a snapshot from an animated movie through the use of color and styling. I think it turned out okay overall. Uh, it definitely needs a bit more time in some areas. The balance of colors and contrast could be improved and maybe some tweaks to the composition. I am pretty surprised those Yetis didn't turn out to be a complete disaster. So that's a small win at least. Either way, I, uh, I hope it was fun to watch. Cool, time to find out who my secret Santa is. Ah, the man himself. That makes sense. He knows what I like. Epic vistas to chop to pieces. Thanks, Benny. All right, let's see what our boy cooked up for us. Oh my god. Dude, that is so magical. This is typical phase runner stuff right here. I can tell you definitely did something with the style of the Grinch. I feel like this makes me think of the Grinch. Oh, and there's also like Bigfoot kind of thing with a tiny Bigfoot. That's, that's nice. I love this. This is fantastic. Very interesting and unique way of using some stock photos as well. Well done. Hey guys, so you have seen my final artwork and I hope you like it. If you ask me, I wanted to add certain things into it, like keeping a funny note, add some motion into the scene and also add a magical color palette. So in the end, I'm kind of satisfied, but I think there were lots of ways I could have improved it. I could have worked a bit on the environment, but you guys let me know if you like it or not. And I was also having a look at who was my secret Santa and I found out that it was Jeff. I was kind of having a feeling that it might be you Jeff. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on my artwork.
and create, you pretty much did exactly what I was hoping you would do with those stock photos. Uh, the Volkswagen and the snowman, I was hoping for some kind of like snowman caravan and that's exactly what you did. Dude, this is so fun. The amount of movement in this and excitement, it's, it's awesome. This is, this is just a blast of a piece. You absolutely killed it. Well, there you go. It seems it's officially uh, finished now. I am very happy with the result. It is beyond anything I could have imagined. At first, I thought, you know, I, I'm going to try, but I'm not sure if it will work. I guess we'll see. But now looking back at it, yes, it definitely did work. I'm, of course, very happy with the amount of detail, but I also really like the tone. The strong blue vibe is really something I like. And I'm happy it's got this very classic, uh, you know, Christmas vibe. Maybe I could have tried making it a bit more cohesive since, for example, the girl and the snowman are actual photos and the other stuff looks a bit more cartoony, but I guess that's a minor detail that doesn't really matter all that much. But uh, yeah, that is what I made. Now let's go and find out who is my secret Santa. Indro. Okay, very nice. You definitely have a good eye for finding stuff that allows you to go different directions because I could do a ton of stuff with this. I just chose a village. Very nice. What he did with that literally blew my mind. I never expected he would use those house images and take the wooden texture out from them and create a freaking village just from scratch. Absolutely genius. And the details he put into them like the icicle, the snow and each and every little decoration, they are just amazing. I absolutely love it. Hats off to all right so looking over the piece that i did uh, i'm definitely disappointed with the outcome of it it's not the quality that i normally produce and is definitely not the standard that i hold myself to i was struggling to find something unique within the images i was given uh, i tried about four or five different concepts wasn't really happy with any of them and kind of just ended up going with a safe route i can make excuses all i want but at the end of the day you got to be able to deliver and this was a miss for me uh, that said, I hope some of you guys enjoyed it and enjoyed watching the process of it come together. All right, so I'm about to look and see who my secret Santa was. It was Phase Runner. Dude, those photos were definitely a challenge to use and I do not feel like I succeeded in that challenge. Uh, I'm pretty sure at one point my PSD was called the death of Jeff.psd. Right, let's see what Jeff came up with using the stocks I chose. Wow, okay, like it's straight off a postcard. So good. Love the blending and the warm, cozy atmosphere he's created here. I definitely provided a couple of outside of the box star stock images and uh, they've been implemented well, fair play. The composition and framing, masterfully done. Jeff, you smashed it. I mean, of course you did, you always do. Brilliant. Christmas is all about stories. And what's a better story than four lovely fellows coming together to inspire and create? On that note, this particular story is about to come to an end. We wish you happy holidays and all the best for the new year. And may your creativity flow like never before.